Diablo 2 Diablo 2 is an action role-playing hack-and-slash video game developed by Blizzard North and published by Blizzard Entertainment in 2000 for Microsoft Windows, Classic Mac OS, and Mac OS. The game, with its dark fantasy and horror themes, was conceptualized and designed by David Bravik and Eric Schaefer, who with Max Schaefer acted as project leads on the game. The producers were Matthew Householder and Bill Roper. Building on the success of its predecessor Diablo, 1996, Diablo 2 was one of the most popular games of 2000. Major factors that contributed to Diablo 2's success include its continuation of popular fantasy themes from the previous game and its access to Blizzard's free online play service Battle.net. An expansion to Diablo 2 was released in 2001. A sequel, Diablo 3, was announced in 2008 and was released on May 15, 2012. Diablo 2's storyline progresses through four chapters or acts. Each act follows a predetermined path, but the wilderness areas and dungeons between key cities are randomly generated. The player progresses through the story by completing a series of quests within each act, while there are also optional side dungeons for extra monsters and experience. In contrast to the first Diablo, whose levels consisted of descending deeper and deeper into a gothic themed dungeon and hell, Diablo 2's environments are much more varied. Act 1 is similar to the original Diablo, the rogue encampment is a simple palisade fort, while plains and forests making up the wilderness area, and the monastery resembles the typical Middle Ages fortress. Act 2 mimics ancient Egypt's desert and tombs, Lutkoline resembles a Middle Eastern city and palace during the Crusades. Act 3 is supposedly based on the Central American jungles, Kurist is inspired by the lost Maya civilization. Act 4 takes place in hell and is the shortest with just three quests compared to the other acts that have six. The Lord of Destruction expansion adds the fifth chapter Act 5 which continues the story where Act 4 left off. Act 5's style is mainly mountainous as the player ascends Mount Air 8, with alpine plateaus and icy tunnels and caverns. Occasional portals can take the player to dungeons in hell, seen in Act 4, for extra monsters and experience. After reaching the summit of Air 8, the player gains access to the World Stone Keep whose architecture may be reminiscent of Angkor Wat and other Hindu temples. In addition to the acts, there are three sequential difficulty levels, Normal, Nightmare, and Hell, completing the game, four acts in the original or five acts in the expansion, on a difficulty setting will open up the next level. On higher difficulties, monsters are more varied, stronger and may be resistant or immune to an element or physical damage, experience is penalized on dying, and the player's resistances are handicapped. However, better items are rewarded to players as they go through higher difficulties. A character retains all abilities and items between difficulties, and may return to a lower difficulty at any time, albeit it is not possible to replay the quests that are already completed. Players can create a hardcore character. In normal mode, the player can resurrect their character if killed and resume playing, while a hardcore character has only one life. If killed, the character is permanently dead and unplayable. In addition, all items and equipment on that character will be lost unless another friendly character has the loot icon checked. Standard and hardcore characters play on separate online channels, as such a hardcore player can never appear in the same game session as a standard player. Diablo 2 uses a system of randomly generated equipment similar to the original Diablo, but more complicated. Weapons and armor are divided into several quality levels, normal, magical, set, rare and unique. Normal quality items are base items with a fixed set of basic properties, such as attribute requirements, maximum durability, armor rating, on armor, block chance, on shields, damage and attack speed, on weapons. Magical quality items have blue names and one or two randomly selected bonuses, such as bonuses attributes, skills or damage, indicated by a prefix or suffix. Rare quality items have randomly generated yellow names and two to six random properties. Unique items have fixed names and gold text, and instead of randomized properties, they have a set of three to eight pre-selected properties. Green name set items have fixed names and pre-selected properties like unique items and belong to specific name sets of 2 to 6 items. Additional properties known as set bonuses are activated by equipping multiple or all items from the same set. These are themed on individuals, like Suburbs Cudgel, Shield and Amulet each provide individual bonuses which are enhanced if two or more of the items are used to equip a character. It is unusual to encounter more than one item from a set in a single playthrough of the game, 
so collectors need to play the game many times to accumulate all items from a set, or purchase them online from other players who possess them but do not need them. Additionally, items can possess sockets, which can be used to upgrade items by adding gems for various bonuses. Diablo 2 includes an item crafting system. An item known as the Heratric Cube is used to combine two or more items to create a new item. For example, three identical lower quality gems can be combined to create a single higher quality gem, and three small rejuvenation potions can be combined to create a single, more powerful rejuvenation potion. Diablo 2 allows the player to choose between five different character classes Amazon, Necromancer, Barbarian, Sorceress, and Paladin. Each character has different strengths weaknesses and sets of skills to choose from, as well as varying beginning attributes. The maximum level that any character can obtain is level 99. Two additional character classes, the Druid and Assassin, were added in the The player can enlist the help of one hireling, computer-controlled mercenaries, from a mercenary captain in the town, the Rogue Scouts, Desert Mercenaries, and Iron Wolves, and Barbarians, from Acts 1, 2, 3, and B, only. The expansion allows players to retain their mercenary throughout the entire game as well as equipping them with armor and weapons. Hirelings gain experience and attributes like the player, although their level cannot surpass that of their master character. Typically players choose a hireling that provides something missing from their character class, for instance the melee-focused barbarian may choose an iron wolf for ranged magical support. Diablo 2 can be played multiplayer on a local area network, LAN or the Blizzard's Battle.net online service. Unlike the original Diablo, Diablo 2 was made specifically with online gaming in mind. Several spells, such as Auras or War Cries, multiply their effectiveness if they are cast within a party, and although dungeons still exist, they were largely replaced by open spaces. Battle.net is divided into open and closed realms. Players may play their single-player characters on open realms. Characters in closed realms are stored in Blizzard servers, as a measure against cheating, where they must be played every 90 days to avoid expiration. Originally, these closed realms served their purpose of preventing cheating, as open games were subject to many abuses as the characters were stored on players' own hard drives. Within the last few years, however, many cheats are used on these closed realms. Hacks, bots, and programs which allow the player to run multiple instances off the game at the same time are not allowed by Blizzard but are very commonly used. Spam bots, programs which advertise sites selling Diablo 2's virtual items for real-world currency, run rampant on the service and a player hosting a public game can expect a visit from one every few minutes. Due to the surplus of virtual items provided by the automated bots, which repeatedly kill bosses to obtain items, supply is well in excessive demand and items which used to trade well are now often given away for nothing. As the game can be played cooperatively, players versus environment, groups of players with specific sets of complementary skills can finish some of the game's climactic battles in a matter of seconds, providing strong incentives for party-oriented character builds. Up to eight players can be in one game, they can either unite as a single party, play as individuals, or form multiple opposing parties. Experience gained monsters hit points and damage, and the number of items dropped are all increased as more players join a game, though not in a strictly proportional manner. Players are allowed to duel each other with all damage being reduced in player versus player, PvP. The bounty for a successful kill in PvP is a portion of the gold and the ear of the defeated player, with the previous owner's name and level at the time of the kill. The ladder system can be reset at various intervals to allow for all players to start fresh with new characters on an equal footing. Ladder seasons have lasted from as short as six months to over a year. When a ladder season ends, all ladder characters are transferred to the non ladder population. Certain rare items are available only within ladder games, although they can be traded for and exchanged on non ladder after the season has ended. The game has been patched extensively. The precise number of patches is impossible to determine as Battle.net has the capability of making minor server-side patches to address immediate issues, the game is in version 1.14d. Through the patch history, several exploits and issues have been addressed, such as illegal item duplication, though it still exists, as well as major revamps to the game's balance, such as the ability to reduce skills and attributes. Not all patches have affected Diablo 2 directly as several were designed to address issues in the expansion to the game and had minimal effects on Diablo 2. Diablo 2 takes place after the end of the previous game, Diablo, in the world of Sanctuary. 
In Diablo, an unnamed warrior defeated Diablo and attempted to contain the Lord of Terror's essence within his own body. Since then, the hero has become corrupted by the demon spirit, causing demons to enter the world around him and wreak havoc. A band of adventurers who pass through the rogue encampment hear these stories of destruction and attempt to find out the cause of the evil, starting with this corrupted dark wanderer. As the story develops, the truth behind this corruption is revealed. The soul stones were originally intended to imprison the prime evils after they were banished to the mortal realm by the lesser evils. With the corruption of Diablo's soul stone, the demon is able to control Dark Wanderer and is attempting to free his two brothers Mephisto, and Bale. Bale, united with the mage Tal Rasha, is imprisoned in a tomb near Lotkaline. Mephisto is imprisoned in the eastern temple city of Kuris. As the story progresses, cutscenes show the Dark Wanderer's journey as a drifter named Marius follows him. The player realizes that the Dark Wanderer's mission is to reunite with the other prime evils, Bale and Mephisto. The story is divided up into four acts. In the epilogue, Marius, speaking in a prison cell, indicates he was too weak to enter hell, and that he fears the stone's effects on him. He gives the soul stone to his visitor. The visitor reveals himself to be Bale, the last surviving prime evil now in possession of his own soul stone. He then kills Marius and sets the prison cell on fire. The story continues in the expansion where Bale attempts to corrupt the mythical world stone on Mount Arate. Upon returning to the Pandemonium Fortress after defeating Diablo, Tyriel opens a portal to send the adventurers to Arate. The game was originally to be released in 1999, after being shown off at E3 1998. According to designer and project lead Eric Schaefer, Diablo 2 never had an official, complete design document. For the most part we just started making up new stuff. The game was slated to have two years of development work, but it had taken Blizzard North over three years to finish. Diablo 2, despite having less than 1% of the original code from Diablo I and having much of its content and internal coding done from scratch, was seen by the testers as more of the same. The game was meant to be released simultaneously both in North America and internationally. This allowed the marketing and PR department for Blizzard North to focus their efforts in building up excitement in players worldwide for the first week off sales, contributing to the game's success. The score was composed by Matt Ullman and integrates creepy ambience with melodic pieces. The style of the score is ambient industrial and experimental. It was recorded in Redwood City, Oakland, and San Mateo, California from April 1997 to March 2000. Some tracks were created by reusing the tracks from the original game, while others by rearranging tracks that were outtakes. Other scores are combinations of parts that were created more than a year after the first game's release. A single track usually integrates recorded sample is from sound libraries, live recorded instrument interpretation samples specially meant for the game, guitar, flute, oriental percussion, and electronic instruments also making the tracks difficult for later live interpretations. While the player visits the town, the game recreates the peaceful atmosphere from the first Diablo game, so for that the theme from Act 1 called Rogue comes back with the same chords of the original piece, reproducing only a part of the original Diablo town theme. For Act 2 Mustafa Wise, a percussionist, and Scott Peterson, the game sound designer, worked on the drum samples. Wise played on the dumbback, djembe and finger symbols which gave Matt Holman a base upon which to build tracks around. The town theme from Act 2, Toru, makes strong statement of departure from the world of Act 1 while also maintaining a thematic connection to what had come before. It is the first time in the series to be used some radically different elements than the guitars and choral sounds that dominate both the original Diablo and the opening quarter of Diablo 2. The foundation of the Toru piece is found in exciting dynamics of a Chinese wind gong. The instrument radically changes color from a steady mysterious drone to a harsh, fearsome noise, that gives exotic feeling and at the same time the passing off the second town. In all sequences of Act 2 with deserts and valleys, Arabic percussion sounds dominate. The composer was impressed by two of the Spectrasonics music libraries, Symphony of Voices and Heart of Asia. He used samples from Heart of Asia in the harem piece from Act 2. The crypt track uses a sample from Symphony of Voices, the choral phrase Miserere. Voice samples from Heart of Asia, Heart of Africa, and Symphony of Voices by Spectrasonics. The harem track samples from Heart of Asia, the Sanskrit female one samples. The game was released in collector's edition format, containing bonus collector's material, a copy of the Diablo Dungeons and Dragons pen and paper campaign setting, and promotional movies for other Blizzard games. 
In 2000, the Diablo II exclusive gift set similarly contained exclusive collector's material and promotional videos, as well as a copy of the official strategy guide. The 2000 release Diablo gift pack contained copies of Diablo and Diablo II, but no expansions. The 2001 Diablo Battle Chest version contained copies of Diablo II, Diablo II, Lord of Destruction, the official strategy guide, and the original Diablo. Recently however, the Battle Chest edition no longer contains the original Diablo. Blizzard continues to provide limited support for Diablo II, including occasional patches. Although the original CD retail release worked on Windows 95-98-Me and T4SP5, the current version downloadable from Battle.net requires at least Windows 2000-XP. Around 2008, the announcement of Diablo 3 renewed the interest in its predecessor and brought more attention to the many mods available for the game. In 2015 an unofficial port for the ARM architecture-based Pandora handheld became available by static recompilation and reverse engineering of the original x86 version. On March 11, 2016 Blizzard released the 1.14 patch, which added support for Windows 7 and newer, a Mac OS installer and support for OS X 10.10 and 10.11 although there is currently no support for macOS 10.13. In its debut day on shelves, Diablo 2 sold 184,000 units. The game's global sales reached 1 million copies after two weeks, and 2 million after one and a half months. It was awarded a spot in the Guinness Book of World Records 2000 edition for being the fastest-selling computer game ever sold, with more than 1 million units sold in the first two weeks of availability. Its sales during 2000 alone reached 2.75 million globally, 33% of these copies were sold outside the United States, with South Korea making up the largest international market, and Diablo 3 have since surpassed Diablo 2's record to become fastest selling computer games ever at their times of release, according to Blizzard. In the United States, PC Data tracked 308,923 sales for Diablo 2 during the June 25th to July 1st period including sales of its collector's edition. This drew revenues of $17.2 million. Domestic sales reached 790,285 units, $41.05 million, by the end of October 2000, according to PC Data. Another $4.47 million were earned in the region by that date via sales of the collector's edition. Diablo II sold 1.7 million copies and earned $67.1 million in the United States by August 2006. It was the country's second best-selling computer game between January 2000 and August 2006. Combined sales of all Diablo games released between January 2000 and August 2006, including Diablo 2, had reached 4.5 million units in the United States by the latter date. It received a gold sales award from the Entertainment and Leisure Software Publishers Association ELSPA, indicating sales of at least 200,000 copies in the United Kingdom. Diablo 2 became a major hit in the German market, and debuted at number one on Media Control's computer game sales chart for June 2000. Speaking with Havis Interactive's public relations director, PC player Asudo Hoffman noted that the representative had to make an effort on the phone to avoid singing and jubilating over the game's commercial performance. The Verband der Unterhaltung Software Deutschland, VUD, presented Diablo 2 with a gold award after three weeks of availability indicating sales of at least 100,000 units across Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. It maintained first place for July and rose to platinum status, 200,000 sales, by the end of the month. The game proceeded to place in media control's top 10 through October, peaking at number 2 in August, and in the top 30 through December. By the end of 2000, roughly 350,000 units had been sold in the German market. Diablo 2 continued to chart in January 2001 with a placement of 24th, and its limited edition debuted in second place for February. That April, the VUD presented the game with a double platinum certification, for 400,000 sales. This made it one of the region's best-selling computer games ever at that time. As of June 29, 2001, Diablo 2 has sold 4 million copies worldwide. Copies of Diablo Battle Chess continue to be sold in retail stores, appearing on the NPD Group's top 10 PC game sales list as recently as 2010. Even more remarkably, the Diablo Battle Chess was the 19th best-selling peak game of 2008, a full seven years after the game's initial release, and 11 million users still played Diablo 2 and StarCraft over Battle.net in 2010.
Diablo 2 has a positive reception. The PC version of the game achieves an overall score of 88 100s on Metacritic and 89% at Game Rankings. GameSpy awarded the game an 86 out of 100, IGN awarded the game an 8.3 out of 10, and GameSpot awarded the game an 8.5 out of 10. Diablo 2 earned GameSpot's 2000 Runner Up Reader's Choice Award for Role Playing Game of the Year. The game has received the Computer Game of the Year, Computer Role Playing Game of the Year and Game of the Year Awards from the Academy of Interactive Arts and Sciences at the 2001 Interactive Achievement Awards. In August 2016, Diablo 2 placed 21st on Time's The 50 Best Video Games of All Time list. It was placed at number 8 on Game Informer's Top 100 RPGs of All Time list. The Secret Cow level is the result of a running joke from the original Diablo that spawned from an internet rumor about the cows that appear in the game, seemingly without purpose. Supposedly, if the cow was clicked a certain number of times, a portal to a secret level would open. The rumor turned out to be a hoax, but the legend was born, and player after player asked Blizzard about how to access the level. In, an add-on for Diablo created by third-party developer Synergistic Software, it was possible to change a parameter in a specific text file, so that the farmer was dressed in a cow suit, with appropriate new dialogue, Moo. I said Moo. To stop the rumors, Blizzard included a cheat in StarCraft that read there is no cow level, adding to the official denial of the cow level. On April 1, 1999, a Diablo 2 screenshot of the week featured cows fighting. People wondered if the screenshot was an April Fool's joke or if there really was a secret cow level planned for Diablo 2, which turned out to be true. The secret cow level is considered one of gaming's top 10 Easter eggs according to IGN. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.